Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another GMAT Club Admit Debrief. My name is Selvi. I'm a GMAT Club moderator. And today we have with us Pratik, who scored a 760 on his GMAT and has gotten an admit from LBS, Booth, and AGC Paris. Hi, Pratik. How are you doing? Hi, Selvi. I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, so for those of y'all who want to know more about Pratik's GMAT journey uh, and, you know, why he wanted to take up an MBA degree in the first place, check out the video which he did with Rajat, who is the founder of eGMAT. Um, we will attach the link, I guess, in our comment section somewhere or in our description. Um, so, yeah, why don't we start uh, Pratik, you know, with why don't you just introduce yourself first to the audience for those who don't know you? Sure. So, so as you said, I'm Pratik. Um, I live in Toronto, but I'm originally from India. I moved here for my undergrad in economics and then went to the University of Toronto for my master's in global affairs and have worked in public policy for about five years, first in the government as an economist and a policy advisor, and now more recently with the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce in financial regulations and understanding how public policy impacts businesses. Uh, so public policy is roughly my background. And then earlier last year, I decided to do an MBA or start thinking about uh, doing an MBA. I see. I see. And like we mentioned, uh, you did apply to three schools and you got admitted to all of them. So what was the secret behind choosing and applying to only those programs where you felt you had the highest chance of getting in? So, Selby, I think it's important that we take a step back to answer the larger question of what took me the most amount of time to figure out and which was why I wanted an MBA. So once you have that answer, once you're able to understand why you want to do an MBA, then it's easier to work backwards from that plan. Um, because once you know what you need an MBA for, then you can start looking at schools that can best provide you the answer to that question. In my case, um, those answers were being provided by HEC Paris, LBS, and, and Chicago Booth. Um, and, and I think I've spoken about this with Rajat in a previous interview, that for me, there were two factors that were really important. Uh, one was the geography. I wanted to be closer to my parents back home uh, in, in India. And the second factor was I really wanted an MBA to pick up some of those hard skills that I don't have as a result of being from a public policy background. Um, and those questions were being answered by European schools and that I was getting access closer to India and that it, you know France and, and London are considerably closer to India than North America's. And then the other answer was what school best provides me with an environment where I can actually learn and grow some mm. of those business school skills. And that answer was best being answered uh, that question was best being answered by LBS and Booth and, and, and HEC as well. Yeah. So that's once I had my why and MBA, then it was easier for me to work backwards from there. And that's why I applied to these three schools. I see. So uh, which school did you get into? Uh, could you tell us that? Oh, like, which, sorry, I'm which did you choose to go to? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm going to Chicago Booth. I'm going to Chicago Booth. You're going to Chicago Booth. So you did say that geography was kind of the reason why you chose Chicago. Was there any other reasons why you chose Chicago Booth? No, so I chose, I chose LBS and HEC for the geography primarily. That, that's what the okay. driving factor was to be closer to India. Chicago yeah. Booth uh, has been my dream school for a very long time for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it's academically one of the strongest business schools in the world in that... Okay you go to Chicago Booth to really pick up some of those um, strong academic skills of how businesses work. Also, I approach decision making from a very data analytical perspective. I think yeah. your answers are always, in my opinion, based on strong evidence based evidence based decision making and Chicago Booth really takes that approach. And that, that's what it's known for. That's the Chicago approach to problem solving. Um, and then the second reason for being Chicago Booth being my top choice was really for its paid forward mentality, which means that it's got a very strong sense of community where everybody is willing to help each other out. And that became very evident while I was applying to business schools. Mm -hmm. I reached out to folks 
at booth and um, you know I would get a response back right away saying oh we'd be happy to talk about our school and we'd be happy to talk about our experience at at booth and it wasn't just current students it was also the alumni network uh, that was willing to really take the time and, and speak to you about it so those two things really stood out and then of course when you look at the faculty and and uh, the kind of folks who go to Chicago booth there it's just been an honor to you know study with some of them and be taught by some of them for sure Definitely. Uh, I see here that you have taken both the GRE and the GMAT. You scored mm -hmm. a three three twenty four, right, on your yeah. GRE test. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, what was the reason why you took the GMAT in the first place, uh, even though you did get a great GRE score? I so I took the GRE a couple of years back, or three years back, because mm -hmm. I wanted to apply to PhD programs, yeah. and. At the time, I was flirting with the idea of probably doing a PhD in either political science or, or economics. And that's why I took, a, took the GRE. And, and I applied to HEC with that score uh, because HEC has a slight, they have rolling admissions. So when I applied to HEC, I hadn't applied to LBS or both. Uh, and HEC was, you know, again, an amazing school, one of the best business schools in the world. Uh, and, and when I got in, there were these two other schools that I wanted to apply to. And I'd heard, and again, I can't base this, I don't have the data to say whether it's correct or false, but I'd heard that there are some industries uh, that prefer the GMAT when they come mm -hmm. to hire on campus, uh, when they come to recruit, recruit. And I hadn't, again, I can't speak to how true or false that is, but I'd heard that. And I said, you know what, if I have the next five months to myself, why don't I just take the GMAT? And when I took the GMAT, with the idea of applying to Booth and LBS, um, it was primarily so that when I get into business school, if I got into business school, I would have a better chance at recruiting um, if there was any truth in some folks preferring a GRE score versus the GMAT. That being said, I can't speak to whether it's true or false. I'm just glad I have both scores now. I don't, I don't really know whether there's any value of having two scores, but um, I mean, hey, you still got it. I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. the biggest thing. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, you know, of course, um, as I said, there you have already talked extensively about you know your whole GMAT journey, and I think um, if we we can talk more and more about it. But uh, you you there's already a video about it, so people can check that out. Again, we'll put the link up somewhere. Um, but let's go back. Uh, and like talk a little bit about uh, the essay prompts, you know, how do you approach them uh, of Booth and LBS? I think at a, at a larger philosophical level, I think, uh, and I will get into more concrete details about this, at a larger philosophical level, you have to be very honest about why you want an MBA. And that's one of the hardest questions to answer, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, once you have that figured out, then the essays become relatively easy because you are writing essays, or at least you should be writing essays of only schools that will help you reach your aim of why you want to do an MBA, right? And for me, the way I approached the essays of both Booth and LBS was that I was completely honest with them. At Booth, I said, listen, there are certain um, hard skills that I lack as a result of not coming from a business background. Um, and I'd like to pick those up. And I know both is credited with being one of the strongest curriculums and one of the most rigorous curriculums. And I really want to come to business school to pick up some of those skills in addition to growing my network, in addition to exploring different industries and so on and so forth. Um, then I also spoke and, and I'll get into what I spoke at LBS about. Um, then the second thing I spoke to Booth was, again, about that very strong faculty, about their data-driven approach and how I personally connect with it because that's I come from an econ background. I have a data science background as well. So for me, that's just a natural way of decision-making. I don't know any other way of how you would make a decision unless it's backed in evidence. Um, and then the third was for, the third or the fourth was that I'm a big fan of the community. So you have to... You have to tell them, one, why it is that you're doing an MBA, two, what value that uh, you're adding, and three, what value will they add to you? If you mm -hmm. can answer those three questions and be very concrete about those answers, then I think that makes for a strong application. At LBS, um, 
uh, the LBS program is also very flexible. So the other thing about Booth is that it's a very flexible curriculum. So you can choose whatever you want to do other than one course, which is the leadership development course. You can otherwise tailor your entire MBA in a manner that best fits your purpose. And LBS to an extent is also like that. Uh, the second year is completely up to your making. It has flexible exit points. You can do more than one internship. And all of those things really attracted me about it. And I was honest about that answer. I said, listen, LBS is again, one of the best business schools in the world. It's a very global business school. We live in a very global environment and therefore um, LBS would be a very strong choice for me. And in addition to that, it allows me the flexibility to chart my own course over the next year and a half to two years. Um, and what that's doing, Selby, is it's, it's telling these business schools that you really have done your research about yeah. why these business schools best fit, fit your purposes. And I think that's very important. Um, I think we, I think the reason why honesty is the best policy here is because you will save yourself a lot of hours if you're able to figure out what your genuine story is. I mean, just for the sake of your own sanity, know why you want to go to business school, know your, why you're targeting these particular business schools. Chicago has a second essay, which is tell us about yourself outside of uh, who you are in, in your professional space. Okay. And here, I think they're looking to understand how good a fit you would be outside of the classroom. What is it that you are other than the work that you do? What are, what are some of the motivations that drive you? Um, and in my case, it was a lot of working at the intersection of public policy and economics and working a lot with grassroots organizations um, in Toronto. And I, and I continue to work for them. Um, you know, it, it also um, is looking at how you can connect what you do outside of work to what um, Chicago Booth has to offer. So in my case, the way I approached this was I really researched about all of those other things that makes Chicago unique, which is, you know, the clubs that they have, their outreach programs, um, how they work with grassroots organizations through um, something similar to a public sector consulting practice within, within the booth community. And all of those things, again, it wasn't that I had to make any of this up to make a case for myself there. These all flew like, they were all very naturally inclined to how I conduct myself, right? Um, so, so it, it, they Chicago Booth and LBS uh, and HEC as well were very natural fits for me. So mm -hmm. the essay writing was was relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. But uh, okay, so the thing is that like the next round deadlines are approaching. You know, a lot of our GMAT club members are still planning to take their tests and at the same time work on their essays. How much time did it take you actually to work on your essays? Did you work on it while you were studying for your GMAT or you assigned yourself you know, a specific amount of time and just worked on that specific thing? So to target the September date, uh, the first round intake, I started working in June, uh, mm -hmm. May or June. And, and I started doing my research on business schools right up from, uh, yeah. from June all the way into into August. And, and I was studying for the GMAT and researching schools simultaneously. Uh, mm -hmm. And I didn't have to worry as much about why the YMBA question, because I had already figured that out even before I decided to apply to these business schools. So in terms of, I think the second round is due in Jan, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. the first, second week of Jan. Um, in terms of whether they should focus on writing the GMAT or um, thinking about business schools, I think with a crunch timeline like this, they will have to do both of those things together. Yeah. That said, I do know that there are um, consultants who help you walk through that process. Um, yeah. And and that definitely could be helpful for some folks who are still trying to figure out what school best suits their purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely doable. I, I took my time, um, but that is not to say that four months is necessary to to get into a good business school. I I don't I don't know whether I I'm not saying that it can't be done in a in less than yeah. a month. I just took my time. 
it makes sense. But did, did you take any consultants, if you don't mind telling us? No, no I, you didn't ask. It was all done by you. That's, yes, that's ex except for the GMAT. Except for the GMAT. <laughs> I, was, I was heavily relying on eGMAT for my GMAT preparations, for sure. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, coming to another part, which is who are your recommenders and why did you choose them? Yeah, this so this is this is an interesting question because yeah. I've had a change in bosses in my current job um, over the past three years. Over the past couple of years, I've had three new bosses um, mm -hmm. for one reason or another. And all of those three bosses have been amazing, except that I... I don't think that we've been at that level where they can speak about me as a person and, and about me more professionally. Of course, they can talk about it, but I I think for a strong reference, you need somebody who can speak to you about who you are as a person outside of work as well. I think that's very important, in my opinion. Um, and COVID has complicated that because we haven't met in person. I haven't met my current boss in person at all. Um, and so that takes away a little bit from from my confidence there in, in choosing a particular reference. So I went back to my public sector uh, bosses when I was working for the government. Um, and I chose my first boss, who was my manager when I was an economist at the Ministry of Municipal Affairs. And then my second uh, reference was my manager at the Ministry of Economic Development when I was a policy advisor. And uh, for me, the driving factors for why they were referees for me was one, they knew me very well inside out, not just what I'd done for work, but also who I was as a person, what the driving factors were for me. And they knew why I wanted to do an MBA because these are folks that I've spoken to back and forth. So I think it's very important that whoever you choose, know your backstory, uh, knows your backstory, and they they understand you at a more holistic level. It's it's very easy for a reference to write about who you are professionally speaking um, and you know speak to what you do in the office. But I think if you're, uh, if the person that you're choosing is to be your reference can speak at a more personal level of what your driving factors are, then that makes for a very strong reference. Again, I'm not somebody who's judged references in the past. I'm just speaking from my own experience. I, I could be wrong here. Why that is tricky, why I thought so this was the one part about my application that I was slightly nervous about because business schools very explicitly state that they prefer that your current manager be your reference. Uh, at least one of the references should ideally by, be by your current manager. And in my case, it wasn't. And But I think Chicago Booth definitely um, asks you why you've chosen your references the way you have. And that's where you can explain to them. And that's what I did. I said, listen, I've, I've had three changes in bosses. Um, and the folks that I'm choosing know me at a more personal level in, in addition to being uh, my direct managers from back in the day. Uh, and, and I think that that was very valuable. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Now, this is a question I think uh, whoever is going to be applying to round two would want to know more about how was your interview preparation like and your inter interview experience my interview experience at both the schools is amazing uh, mm -hmm. i was interviewed by current students at lbs and uh booth at lbs it was somebody who had just passed out at booth mm -hmm. it was a uh, it was a second year boothie and then at hc paris it was um um alumni um two two folks um who did my interview. So the way it works at Chicago Booth is that you're paired with uh, with your interviewee and then um, sorry, your interviewer, I think, and um, and you set up your, your call and stuff. And then there is also a video component to it. How did I prepare for my uh, interviews? I think GMAT Club's debrief, um, that was one of the things that I really went back to. Uh, then I know it was it was <laughs> <Go incredible. to laughs> it was incredible. It was it was really it was really helpful to hear what other people's experiences had been like, which reminds yeah. me to write there as well about my experience. Um, it was very important to see the kind of questions that were being asked, um, just to get a sense of what it is that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and the GMAT Club debriefs were also very helpful in setting the stage for the kind of emotions that run 
through the interview process. Some folks had a very tense interview process. Some folks had a very chill interview process. Some folks had a very friendly experience, some not so much. Um, yeah. it, was, it was very good to get that sense to uh, be mentally prepared for whatever might come. Um, at a more personal level, I think in terms of what I did practically, I went through those questions and I spoke them out loud in front of the mirror um, and, you know, practice those questions day in, day out <clears throat> for at least a couple of weeks, um, yeah. just to make sure that my story was intact. And, and this again goes back to your essay writing process. One of the core things about an interview is that they're to, to a large extent, they're also seeing whether your story makes sense. Hmm. Right. Whether what you said in your essays flows with what you're seeing in your um, uh, in your interview process. And which is why in most cases, interviews are blind in that they folks don't have access to your um, uh, to your MBA application. The folks who are interviewing you don't have access to your MBA application. And I at least at Booth, that's the case. And the reason hmm. for that is these folks who then assess you for your answers those th that assessment is then compared to what you've written um in your essays right and and that that makes sense you want there to be consistency across the board um for sure so i really i really practiced my questions uh, out loud i made sure that my story made sense and i made sure that my reasons for applying were were sound in terms of concrete things go to gmat club look at their debriefs um get a sense of the kind of questions that are are, are there out there take your time. Um, and then the interview experience itself, uh, at Booth, it was very friendly. Uh, she came up and said, listen, like none of the questions that I'm going to ask you are there to trick you. I genuinely want to get to know you better. And the, and the same was at LBS. Again, a really good experience at LBS as well, um, mm -hmm. where the person who was interviewing me said, listen, um, this is just going to be a freewheeling conversation. I just want to get to know you better. And the thing that I've read on GMAT Club is the reason why that is the case is because folks really just want to know who they're sitting next to in class uh, yeah. for when you join business school. So that's the approach that they're looking for. Once you reach the interview stage, I think at that point, and a lot of people have said this, it's about fit more than anything else. I think they've already judged you in the sense that they're like, okay, this person would be a good maybe they might be a good fit in our program. It's not to say whether they think you're smart or not. Um, I think it's just to say that they think for their particular school, you might be a good fit. And now they, try, now they want to assess whether that initial assessment is correct or not. Um, yeah. yeah, any any other questions about this? I'm happy to talk about my interview preparation. Definitely. And yeah, no, I guess this is the final question that we have, which is now, how are you planning to utilize the next six, seven months, uh, you know, before? That's a million dollar question. That's a million <laughs> dollar question. Um, I am planning to, uh, I'm planning to continue doing my work, um, mm -hmm. at least for the next three months or so. Yeah. And I want to do a pre MBA internship, um, uh, in, in a field that I haven't worked in before. So anything outside of public policy, I'm open to, um, and then I want to be able to go and spend the next month or so with my family um, because I've been in a long distance relationship with my family for about 10 years now, nine, nine to 10 years now. And so I want to be able to take uh, a month off and spend some time with them uh, before I take off again. Um, yeah. And then I'm booked for another couple of years at the very least. So in the next six to seven months, planning to do my... Uh, sticking around with my job, looking for a pre-MBA internship that I think would add value, and then spending some of that remainder of that time with my family. Family time is important, guys. Don't forget. <laughs> very, very important. But yeah, any last uh, tips or advice that you can give to the rest of the MBA applicants? Take your time with figuring out why you want to do an MBA. Um, and this is, you have to be honest with the process for the process to work for you. I don't yeah. think... Um, I don't think you should bog you down with questions around things that you can't control, which is what demographic do I come from? Um, you know, whether, you know, whether my comparison is good relative to other people and so on. And so those are things that you can't control. What you can control is one, your GMAT score. The second thing is 
Uh, you can control what your narrative is, why you want to do an MBA. And the third thing that you can control and something that you really should harp on is what makes you unique through the MBA application. Why is it that your dream school should accept you other than the fact that you really, really, really want to go, right? Like, I mean, if I were to write to Booth that, oh, you've been my dream school for the past, I don't know how many years, and that's why I think you should take me. The answer. <laughs> they they would have been like, he's a really nice guy, but like we want to know more about yeah. what he brings to the table and what we can contribute to his journey. So I think those questions are very important, and and your application is holistic. So mm -hmm. so I know a lot of folks have reached out to me about you know how should we prepare for the GMAT? I'm sitting in a seven twenty. Should I? write it once again and i'm like when i started my gmat journey if i had a 720 i would have been thrilled with it i would yeah. never have written my gmat again honestly speaking so i think that is just one component of the many different pieces that make up a strong application and a strong application does not have to be a story that you've come up with out of thin air um, a strong application is really one that tells what your unique story is. In my yeah. case, that story was, I was a public policy folk who was a uh, public policy person who was looking to pivot from the public sector to the private sector. And I wanted to understand better how organizations think about growth, how they think about market expansion, how they, how they think about innovation, all of that in an uncertain economic environment. And therefore I wanted to come to business school for that. If in your case, you're somebody who's taught for 10 years and now wants to better understand how the business side of things work, then that's your story, right? If yeah. you just come into business school to expand your network, then that's your story, right? So just be true to your story. And I think mm. that's what would make a strong application. That's been my experience. That's a very small sample size. So. But yeah, uh, let me quick check. Uh, all right. So I guess that is pretty much it. So thanks, Pratik, once again for hopping here and telling us your journey. Um, if anyone does want to, uh, you know, ask Pratik any further questions, Pratik, I forgot to ask you this, but is there any way people can connect with you on any yeah. platform? Yeah, I mean, you can you can connect with me on LinkedIn um, or or you can write to me at the GMAT Club. I'd be happy What's to... What's your username? Please say it. <laughs> I'm going to have to check. Just give oh, me a okay. <laughs> sure. just, just give me a quick second. I'll have to check what my username is. Um, I think it's PK192. OK, great. Yeah, so you guys, as you've heard him, you can connect with him there. Just PM him or connect with him on LinkedIn. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so thanks, Pratik, once again. And I'll end no, the live thank, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, Sabi. Definitely. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thanks.